together and give God a glorious day. A full of disease, the day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in the day. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord on this first Sunday in the month of November. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise. Amen. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. We are grateful to God for the opportunity to gather together here at Allen Chapel, where we are living victoriously. Those persons that join us via streaming, we praise God for you taking the time to worship with us on this day. Our call to worship will be done by the Reverend Paula Jackson. We will have an opening hymn line by the Reverend Norman Gordon. Our invocation will be done by Brother Ronald B. Davis. Our scripture lessons, the Old Testament, the Reverend A. Jess Mallow with the Gospel lesson by the Reverend Jimmy Moore. A welcome to our worship celebration today will be done by Dr. Barbara Davis. We will follow our worship as outlined. Won't you stand to your feet today and join us for the doxology? Praise God for more, more blessings, Lord.
on whom in affliction I call. My comfort by day, my song in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Thanking you once again, God, for allowing us this opportunity to assemble in this place one more time. God, we realize that you didn't have to do it, but you did, and for that we are thankful. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, for starting us on our way. For you are truly an awesome God and worthy to be praised. So God, we come to praise you and give you thanks this morning and honor your name. For you are truly an awesome God. Father, we just thank you for being God in our lives. We thank you, dear God, for being the almighty God. And we pray, dear God, that you would just continue to keep us safe as we go through this life one day at a time. Realizing, God, that we'll go through things in this life. But God, you even said in your word, dear Heavenly Father, that we will have trouble in this yes, world. Yes, yeah. But be a good cheer because you'll overcome the world. Yeah. So God, through many dangers, toils and snares, we've already come. Yeah. It was grace that brought us safe thus far. Yeah. And grace will really lead us on. Yeah. Eternal God, our Father, we just thank you this morning yeah. for God. For we know you, God, as a healer, Jehovah Rapha. And we know, dear God, that there are some among us that need to be healed. Yes. So God, we pray this morning for those persons who are sick. God, we pray for this morning for Sister Avis Thomas and for Sister Pat Johnson. Yes. We pray, dear God, that you would heal their bodies. Yes. Sister yes. Anne McClendon. Yes. Brother Ulysses Duhart. Yes. And all those other persons who have fallen ill. God, we pray that you would touch their bodies right now. Yes. And that you would heal them in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God this morning, and you're worthy of praise. God, we pray that you would just continue to bless each one of us. God, we know that you did not give us a spirit of worry. You didn't even give us a spirit of fear, but you gave us a spirit to worship. So God, this morning, we're going to leave it all right here. So God, we come this morning just to praise your holy name. And God, we thank you this morning for the servant that you have stationed here at the chapel in the person of Nathan McCullough. We pray to God that you will continue to strengthen him daily as he goes through his life one day at a time doing the work that you have called him to do. And dear God, we pray for every member of Allen Chapel. We pray to God that you would bless us to use the gifts that you have given us. Even those who don't know what their gift is, God, we all have the, spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So God, we pray that you would just bless us, God, to use the gift that you have given us, that we will be able to move forward God, we thank you. thank you. God, we praise your name this morning. For so God, you are truly an awesome God. God, you just worthy to be praised. God, so we ask you that you would go and that you would bless this service as we go forward. We pray, dear God, that you would just anoint us for this service. And we pray, dear God, that you would bless us to remember on that hill far away stood that old rugged cross, the cross of suffering and shame. And God, as we come from this morning to take of your holy communion, we pray this morning, God, that you would bless us to remember that cross. Bless us to remember Jesus hanging on that cross. Help us to remember that he paid a debt that he didn't even owe. So God, we thank you this morning. That debt was ours. So God, we thank you for allowing him to carry that to the cross for us. And then, God, we thank you that you didn't let him stay on that cross. God, we thank you that that third day morning that you woke up with all power in his hand, power to heal, God, power to deliver. So, God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just keep us focused on you. So God, if we stay focused on you, we won't go astray. So, God, we ask you now that you would just bless us. Bless us to do all that you have called us to do. And God, when this day is over, we can say that we've done all that you have called us to do in this day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
which can be found in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. And I'll be reading verses 9 through 15. And before I begin reading, I'm going to let everyone have a seat. Without my hand, just keep your minds on that song right where it is. Good morning, church. Good morning. To God be the glory for the great things he's done and is continuing to do in the lives of his people. God's word for us, the gospel lesson, is coming from Mark 12th chapter, verses 28 through 34. 34 will be read in unison. When you have found it, would you please stand? <coughs> One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Lord God 
with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your soul, and with your mind, and with all your strength. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all of our offerings and sacrifices. Third and fourth together. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dare ask him any more questions. The word of God, for God's precious, precious people. Oh, <laughs> 
this and then they said that, this and that. Homecoming, 
Amen. That, that most of you probably stood up late and all of that and the change of time. But you made up your mind that you were going to be in the house of the Lord anyway. Amen. So we praise God and the man of God for all of you. Let me also recognize my beloved son. Amen. Romain is in the house. Amen. He's in the house. He said, Dad, I could not come at the homecoming without being in the house of the Lord. Amen. So we just praise God and we honor God for him. We encourage you to please support the 2022 Women's Day celebration. Do everything that you can, amen, to make sure that the Women's Day is a great success on next Sunday. Amen. If you have some new ideas, some suggestions, please make sure that you reach out to our co-chairs. also want to let you know that on tomorrow, we will gather for our first quality conference. Amen. It's in person. We will meet in the multi-purpose. Our presiding elder will be here. I'm encouraging all of the officers to make sure that you are here as we join together to take care of the business of our first quality conference. Uh, uh, pick our stewards, uh, uh, our pro tem, our vice chair of the steward board will reach out to you to give you further directions. We're also uh, planning on having a church conference on Monday, November the uh, 14th at 6 p.m. as we organize our church. Amen for the new conference here. Church conference is scheduled for Monday, November the 14th at 6 p.m. and we will meet in our multi-purpose. The October birthday that we're working diligently, amen, with the sweet potato pies and they have done well and they are asking if you decide to have some wonderful pies for uh, Thanksgiving. You can reach out to Sister Sandra Carter and she'll be more than delighted to put you on the list so you can have what you desire for Thanksgiving. Let me also take this moment to thank Sister Kathy Reeves, amen, who works diligently, amen, with our Thanksgiving blessings, where we try to reach out to the community and be a blessing to somebody else. And a lot of people are going through a difficult time right now with the storm that came through and damaged a lot of things. And I think it's just right for us to be able to reach out to those families and be a blessing to them. Amen. So I'm asking every board, every auxiliary, if you can do what you've always done, maybe you can sponsor, you know, a Thanksgiving basket or, you know, a gift card and all of that so we can be able to bless somebody in the life of our church and certainly in the life of the community. We want to remind you that this coming Tuesday is election day. And we are excited that most of you have already voted, but we want to remind that one person that has not voted that you can make sure that you press your way on Tuesday and go and cast your vote. Amen. One vote can make what? A difference. So we praise God and we honor God for your obedience. And if you need some assistance, Sister Cynthia Slater, the president of the NAACP, she'll be more than delighted to help you with the information that you stand in the need of. Beloved, let us remember to pray for those who stand in need of our prayers. Brother Corbett Christian, who is in Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, needs our prayers and certainly our support. Lift up Sister Anne McClendon, who is at home under hospice care. Pray for Sister Evis Thomas, who is at home, stands in need of our prayers. Sister Patricia Johnson, who is in the hospital in New York City, needs our prayers. And we heard that Sister Mildred Edwards is in the house. And we praise God. Amen. Amen. That the Lord has allowed her. Amen. To be back in the house of the Lord just one more time. And I look back in the back, I see Brother Fox Presley in the house of the Lord. We just bless God. And we want to God for him. Also, let me ask you to lift up those families in bereavement. Lift up Sister Tanya McKenzie, passing of a brother. Needs our prayers and certainly our support. Lift up Minister Lynetta Augusty. Their family shared with the homegrown celebration of their aunt in St. Petersburg. They need our prayers and certainly our support as they deal with the passing of their loved one. Lift up Sister Nella Roberts in the passing of a cousin. Down in Miami, these are prayers of certainly our support. And most of you have known or heard 
Sister Laverne Harrison on the prayer line. Got up this morning, prepared for church service. My phone ran. Uh, Sister Laverne Harrison transitioned to glory this morning. So I'm asking you to please remember to pray for that family as they go through this very, very difficult time. I want to thank all of you that uh, joined us for our 123rd session of the Central Idea Conference. Those of you who supported, let me thank our delegates, Sister Vicky Presley, and our alternate delegates, Sister Paul Zedellian, for representing our church so very well. It's giving time. In the life of our church, we are always excited to be able to give back to God what truly belongs to Him. Because here at Alan, we believe that everything that we have, God gave it to us. And if God gave it to us, we don't mind giving back to God what truly belongs to Him. And I'm looking at people that God has blessed your nation. Not because you were so good, but God blessed you in spite of yourself. And so we come today, giving not as unto man, but giving as unto the Lord, who has blessed us with all things to enjoy. Well, how do I give? You can go to Gimlify and share with your gifts. Amen. You can go to Pushpay and share with your gifts. You can text to give. Or you can mail in your gift to Alan Chapel Amy Church, P.O. Box 9717, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32120. Or you can come by the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 until 3 p.m. and share with your giving. Those of you are in the house, you say, well, Robert, I didn't bring my checkbook, I didn't bring my cash, but I do have my debit card and my credit card, and I desire to sow seed in good ground. Sister Calvin Gillis is in the rear, waiting to serve you today. For the rest of us, you can use your envelopes and be able to share in the joy of giving. At this time, our stewards will make preparations as we come now to share in the joy of giving. After the ministers have shared. The rest of us who will follow the directions of our ashes that will begin from the rear, we will come and share with our gifts on today. Our music ministry will give us a sort of selection as we come to share on today. You can be God's giving, no matter how hard you try.
sharing today. We honor God and we praise God for your gifts. Amen. So it's always good to see Dr. Lawrence Gary and his lovely wife worship with us. Amen. We praise God for you and we honor God for you. And uh, also received uh, an announcement. Uh, we want to remind all the residents of the Tuna Beach, all the residents of the Tuna Beach, there will be applications available for financial assistance if you are impacted by the hurricane. And as uh, soon as we get the information, Alan Chapel is going to be one of those sites, amen. Actually, it's two sites. There is the Peabody on the beach side, and Alan Chapel will be that site where people can come and apply for financial assistance. It's my understanding that uh, residents can apply up to $9,000. Uh, businesses, small businesses can apply up to $3,000. I was at the City Commission's meeting on Wednesday, and uh, the City Commission has approved $2.5 million uh, to be made available to the residents if you were impacted in any way that you'll be able to apply. Please get the word out to all of our people so they can take advantage of this great blessing. Won't you put your hands together for our music ministry as we come to give us a ceremony.
circumstances. And that's the reason why you ought not to get into the politics of the church but, but rather get into the holiness of the church because there are so many people in our world today who are going through some challenging moments and they are looking for a light that is shining. They are looking for words of consolation. They are looking for words of encouragement what they are going through, what they're going through. This church, Allen Chapel, has existed for 112 years in this community, touching lives and helping people with their troubles and with their trials. So when we get to this particular text today, we find James, a bond servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. He writes in James chapter 1 to the 12 tribes of Israel who were scattered in uh, the, the, the diaspora, that they were scattered all abroad. He says to them in James chapter 1 and verse number 2, My brethren, count it all joy 
He, he tells us what to do when we go through trials. James says, count it all joy. Count it. That's an interesting word. Count. That word means consider. It means to put it in the equation. Put it all together. You see, oftentimes uh, when we testify about things, we only want to testify about the good things. But, but the job of the church is to help you bring you to a place where you consider it all. Don't skip anything. Don't bypass anything. Don't make a negative column here and a positive column here. But, but you have to put everything in the column of life. He says, count it all joy. He tells us what to do. Uh -huh. Count it all joy. And the last time I checked out the word all, it had a, a very interesting definition. It means everything. Amen. That, that means you got to put everything in the equation. Come on, somebody. You got to put everything together. So somebody here, uh, uh, and you're wondering why you're going through what you're going through. A child of God, the Lord did not promise us that life will be what is. But he promised that he will be with us even to the very end. Come on, somebody. You got to understand that even when you are going through your trials and tribulations, even though you may be going through your ups and your downs, you got to understand that God has not left you. God, God is right there with you. As a matter of fact, I've come to discover, uh, Brother Don, that oftentimes, even as Christians, the only time that we pray is when we are going through our trials. The, the, the only time uh, that we begin to fast is when all hell is breaking loose in our lives. Uh, but is there anybody here that knows uh, that you don't only pray in time of trouble, but you got to pray uh, even when you are on the top of the mountain? Is there anybody here that knows that the Lord calls us to pray in season uh, and out of season? And I wish I had somebody here at Highland Chapel uh, who can declare, Preacher, I've been through some stuff, uh, but I've never stopped praying because I know uh, that prayer still works. I know that God still answers prayer. I wish I had somebody in here that knows that when you pray, God will hear and that God will answer prayer. Is there anybody here that doesn't mind testifying uh, that yes, even on this Christian journey, uh, sometimes it's been rough. Sometimes you feel like throwing in the towel. Sometimes uh, you feel like walking away from God, uh, but then you are reminded uh, that yes, you've been made and do it for a night. Uh, but joy comes in the morning. Is there anybody here uh, that knows that the Lord will take care of? So James, James tells us what to do, and then he tells us when to do it. He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That, that's what it says right there in verse number two. That, that phrase, various trials, means when you are surrounded by trials. Adverse number of adversities. Yeah. And guess what? One of the church's role is to teach people how to deal with trials. Yeah. How to deal with adversities of all kinds. Mm -hmm. Because one of the problems that we, within the church is that, you, you know, we tell people if you come to Jesus, everything is going to be yeah. easy. Everything is going to be fine in your life. But I'll be the first one to tell you that when you give your life to the Lord, when you surrender your life to the Lord, you become a target uh -huh, of the enemy. Am I talking to some real folk in here who oh, don't mind testifying? Reverend, the moment that I gave my life <laughs> to the Lord, it seemed like all hell was breaking loose in my life. I'm, I'm looking at somebody right now. <laughs> You love the Lord and you are serving the Lord, but every time you turn around, uh, it seems like you are dealing with one thing after another. Uh, but can I help you, child of God? Uh, we don't grow when things are easy, uh, but we grow when we are going through tough times. Uh, and I wish I had somebody here uh, that don't mind testifying that you became a better Christian uh, when you were going through some difficult moments in your life. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that knows that child? When you learn how to stand fast, when you learn how to endure, 
So he says, count it all joy. I mean, but man, are you serious? He I got to count it all joy. When I've been fired from my job. You mean I got to count it all with joy? When the bills are due. And there ain't no money in the back of the I got some teachers here, some principals in here. Uh -huh. But when the bills are due and there's no money in the bank. You, you mean I got to count it all with joy? When the doctors have told me that they're only giving me a monthly. You mean, Reverend, I got to call it old Joe with the people that I thought were my friends? Now they have turned their backs on me? Reverend, you mean I got to call it old Joe when my family, they're acting like they've lost their last mind? You got to call it old Joe. You mean, Reverend, I got to call it old Joe? I went through the pandemic and I thought I was good. And now I got to deal with the destruction that came with the storm. You mean I got to count it all joy? The Bible says that count it all joy. When you go through diverse what trials. Well, let me hurry to my close because it's first Sunday. And I, I don't want to hold you until tomorrow. Uh -huh. so, 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 so how do I count it all joy? Well, number one. Cut it all joy in adverse yes. circumstances. Cut yeah. it all joy in adverse circumstances. Let me pop right there and help somebody. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Yeah. Happiness is based on what is going on. If you got plenty of money in your pockets and you got your friends calling you. Amen. You got things going on in your life that you are what happened. But when all those things are taken away, you are no longer what happened. But when you got joy, that, that, that's something that is deep on the way inside of you. Uh -huh. that, that, that's the reason why the choir used to sing. This, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Huh? And the world Of people, one of the things that my daddy 
used to say to us, Sister Sharon, my daddy would say, Son, you cannot control what people do. You can only control how you respond to what people do. And that has helped me along the way. Amen. Because if you focus too much on what people do, amen, that will drive you to a crazy house. I'm almost done. So, so counting more joy in adverse circumstances, counting more joy in spite of people, but thirdly, counting more joy in the midst of problems. Yeah. How many of you know uh, that trouble comes to all of us? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know sometimes when you're sitting over there and you're looking at the pulpit and you see these ministers, yeah. and sometimes there's a temptation to think that ministers don't go through anything. Yeah. But, but I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you that ministers are tough guests because they, they know that the ministers are what ministering to you. That, that's the reason why you are sitting there. Instead of carrying on conversation with somebody else, you need to be praying. Amen. So you want to be praying for what the clergy, what we are ministering here, that God will be able to get the word out to the people of God. You got to make sure that you are praying because what I'm preaching right now, that the enemy is trying to throw arrows uh, uh, at me. But I thank God that there are some prayer warriors. I, I thank God uh, that there are some people, amen, who are, who are whispering a prayer that God uh, will have his word go out. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, so James uh, says to us that we got to call it all joy in spite of what our circumstances are because the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. It just that why? Because the only way that your patience will grow is when you go through what some trials. And we are raising a generation of people, generation of young people, who feel like life ought to be what easy. But I want you to know today that if you go through life the easy way, there will come a time when trouble will come and you won't be able to what to handle it. You, you got to learn to accept trials and tribulations. As a matter of fact, uh, since I hope I've gotten to a place now where when trouble comes in my life, uh, I, I was say, Lord, I, I was expecting this because I, I understand uh, that when trouble, trials and tribulations come into my life, uh, I believe that it's time for an elevation. Come on, somebody. Uh, it is time for a promotion that God uh, is getting ready to take you on higher. Come on, somebody. Because if you can pass the test, uh, then you can go to uh, the next grade. Come on, is there anybody here uh, that knows the trials and tribulations uh, will come in our lives? Uh, but I thank God uh, that when I'm going through my trials and tribulations, uh, I'm not going through it all by myself. Uh, because the Lord uh, He promised uh, that He will be with me. Uh, he promised uh, that He will walk with me. Uh, he will talk with me. Uh, he will assure me uh, that everything is going to be alright. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that don't mind declaring uh, what a friend uh, we have? Jesus, all our sins and peace to bear, what a privilege it is to carry, what a thing to die in prayer, is there anybody here, and know that we have a friend who knows what we go through, who knows our challenges, who knows our troubles, because he's been there. Can I put it? Let the old preacher put it. The old preacher says, on front, one Friday, they hang him on the cross. They stretch him wide. He died on that old rugged cross. Yes, he did. And when he died, they took him down from the cross. They pushed him in a power tomb. He stayed there on that Friday night. He stayed there on that Sunday. 
Oh, joy. When you go through diverse trials, temptations in your life, knowing that the trying of your faith produces what you stand to your feet all over this place you're here today. So Reverend, I came to church today. Thank you for reminding me that I ought to be able to count it all joy. Reverend, I thought that the only time I ought to be joyful is when everything is going fine. But thank you for reminding me that even when things are not going right in my life, that I can count it all joy. You're here today. You have never surrendered your life to the Lord. You are not in a covenant relationship with God. I want to give you this opportunity for you to come and surrender your life to the Lord. Secondly, you may be here today. So, Reverend, there used to be a time that I was on fire for God. I was excited about the things of God. Nobody had to tell me to go to church. Every Sunday morning when I got up, I was ready to come to church. But now, I got to drug myself. Because my fire has gone out. But I want to recommit my life to the Lord today. If you're that person, won't you just walk out and walk down the aisle? You want to recommit your life to the Lord today. Finally, you may be here today. You said, Reverend, my relationship with God is all right. Me and the Lord have a good relationship. But Reverend, I don't have a church home. I don't have a covering over my life. I desire to be a member of other chapel. If you're that person, don't wait for another day. Don't wait another moment. Because the next moment may not be yours. While you still have breath in your body, won't you just walk out and walk down the aisle? While the Christ is singing, we are willing to you. You desire church fellowship. You desire you surrender your life to the Lord. You desire to be the nature of the world. What you got today? God is speaking to you. God is ministering to you. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name.
Jesus is going to be God of praise all of his grace. Amen. So you like to follow our clergy today. We have God for them. Amen. Amen. Show some love to our music ministry. Amen. Come, come on, we can do better than that. Show your love to our music ministry. Amen. Our ministry of music, the Lord God of riches, our director of music. Amen. Sister Tia. God, I will praise God for her and simply want you to show your love to Amel Asher. Amen. Amel Asher. And uh, by the Taurus, it's my understanding that the Mel Asher boy is recruiting. Uh, amen. They're recruiting for some men. Amen. To help do some Asher. So if we have any men who don't mind, you always say one Sunday. Amen. Amen. Please make sure that you see. Amen. Brother. Brother Mitchell, Brother Tony Mitchell is the president of the Mel Ashable. He'll be more than delighted to assist you so you can get on board and serve in the life of the church. Amen. Come on, show your love to our students. We always make preparation. Amen. For the sacrament of first Sunday. Show your love to our board of stewards, our board of trustees, and our wonderful work. Amen. Show your love to our media ministry. Amen. Hospitality ministry, security ministry on the outside. We praise God for them. Amen. Thank God for Sister Chandra. Amen. Morris, who is doing it all by herself. Amen. Amen. Power for God. We praise God for her. Amen. A quick reminder on your way out. Uh, I think Sister Linda uh, Harris Missy and Sister Ann Thomas. They'll be in the north end, so if you need to pick up some tickets, make sure that you do that. Amen. Don't wait until Saturday. Make sure that you get the tickets. Amen. As soon as possible. We also want to remind all of our officers to make sure that you'll be here tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Amen. For our first quality conference. Amen. So we can take care of the business of the quality conference. On Tuesday, if you have not bought it, Amen. We encourage you to go out and vote. If you need transportation, amen, just make sure you call Sister Cheryl Shepherd. Amen. She'll hook you up. Amen. If we have to send Uber to you, we we'll pick you up so you can go vote. We will do that. Amen. Again, we praise God and we honor God for all of you. Why don't you stand to your feet? As we now prepare for our dismissal today, praise God for more, more blessings, Lord.